or something about why my hearing was tuned, you know, where it was. Um, unfortunately, my discovery was that the reason my hearing was tuned in the regions that it was is that's where most of the sound that was of any importance to me was. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough to get me a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> a one-line realization. But but and then I I I you know turned it into something else. But but it was precisely that 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 sense of of we think of this world as we experience it now as the world. But even um, our conventional science, not just physics, but uh, comparative psychology, zoology, a whole range of other sciences, make it very clear that this world that we take as the reality is a kind of one model, one version of, of all the energies that actually science tells us are there. And I remember once, um, there's a wonderful quotation from William James where he compares evolution and our minds to, to sculptors sculpting a particular kind of reality out of the primordial stuff of which the universe is made. And he, he wonders, you know, how different must be the worlds of cuttlefish and crab. And, and, and so um, um, that realization, I think, kind of then opens up to, if you like, uh, a sense of, 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 of the depth and mystery of that which lies beyond what we normally experience, which is really a kind of, was certainly a departure point for me, you know, as, as well, I suppose it's a 17 year old or something like that, so a long time ago. <laughs> Can I lighten up a little bit? This is what this gentleman is asking in kind of more, more kind of mature manner is why can't I become Superman? <laughs> it's understandable. We all want to become Superman. We want to, in a way, defy the laws of science or the laws of physics. There is something within us which hates being limited, being confined. This is what Max is just talking about. So there is something within us studied up, telling us that we are much more than what we think we are. And this shows up as challenging our limitation. This can be physical limitation, this can be mental limitation, this can be intellectual limitation. So this is in fact the study of the spirit saying, don't confine me to this body and mind experience. That I am truly free from this limitation. Hello. Oh, I'm going to read my question. Okay. Uh, so my generation, which starts from the born children from the 80s until now, have similar thoughts about the realization of the world, which is uh, way different than our parents and ancestors. And a lot of us have a strong intuition as if the humanity will be having a huge process in the near future that will change the consciousness of the humanity. Uh, so my question is, are we blindly dreaming or are we going to change? <laughs> well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I guess it's quite difficult to ask, answer that question and please don't hold me to my answer. Um, uh, but. I mean, certainly when we, when we look in terms of the brain and, ha and how it's evolved and the different levels of consciousness that you can experience in the brain, um, you know, a lot of people look at practices such as meditation as being a very important and crucial step to that evolutionary change in which we do have a shift of an awareness as, as a kind of a global society. Um, and, and, you know, step outside our ego-centered world and, and, you know, perhaps live more, more compassionately and with more insight. And so, you know, that's why I think at the moment when, you know, the world is actually a very troubled place and I think, you know, I would actually hate to be in your situation, you know, essentially growing up thinking, 
is, is, this, is this the future that my ancestors have created for us? But, it, but, but I think that the, that's why a lot of people are turning to practices such as meditation, Tai Chi, uh, you, you know, because it offers them that tool where they can have that self-realization and, and really achieve higher states of consciousness that I am convinced are essential to that evolutionary shift. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I've got some comments yes. to make about the um, um, the subject that was brought up by the person you just spoke. The idea that we're going through a, an apocalypse, a kind of awakening um, together, and also with what you spoke about earlier about vibrations and frequencies, that there's a science behind us all. And you can either vibrate at very low frequencies or vibrate at very high frequencies. And the higher we vibrate, the more energy we have, more creative we become, the, the lighter we become, the happier we become, um, and the freer we become. But on the other hand, the lower we vibrate, um, the more dangerous we become, the more aggressive we become and more easily we, we can be controlled and manipulated. And there's a whole science that I think a lot of people are becoming aware of, which at first appears to be new, but I think there are people who, who've known about the science for a very long time, perhaps since ancient times, and they know how to um, scientifically control vibra vibrational frequencies throughout the world, you know, throughout, throughout cultures. And of course, if you're controlling this scientifically and you're in a position of influence and power, it could be in your interest to maintain the, the, the vibration at a very low frequency because then people are easy to control. You can create them, you can integrate them into a sort of machine into it, like Metropolis, for example, the film. Uh, we have the, the people at the top vibrating very highly, who are the thinkers, they have the luxury, we have the workers at the bottom who, who are like machines, um, not really very aware of themselves, but just go through motions of life. Um, and so our, our happiness, our, our sense of vibrational awareness and frequency is related to. Um, how much we're also given as well by people in more privileged positions to ourselves, to the extent that um, it's almost our responsibility to understand how how other people use the science to control us, so that it's used wisely for the benefit of all, and not just the benefit of, of an elite. I mean, you know, you can talk for, for a long time about this. I'm just trying to explore some of my can, can, can you just stop you guys and answer me for the next question? So, uh, I was going to uh, give a little answer to your question as well. So, in uh, Gnosticism, in the Oriental Mysticism, uh, self is named Nafs. Nafs is self. Nafs. And it is related to four layers of human being existence. It means that in the territory of my existence there is four layers for nafs, for self. The first layer corresponds with the activities, primitive activities, primitive vital activities of the cells of the old brain, paleocortex. So this level of nafs is nafs and mare. It controls automatically the activity of whole body. And the, in the same time, when I get anger, it is coming from the reaction of the old brain to the outer world. 
روح این رو بود این دیس لیول آی ام ویکتیم آف دی اکتیویتیز آف دی هورمونز این مای بادی دی سیکند ستیج آف نفس ایز نیو کورتکس which is criticizing, observing and criticizing. It is named the nafs labwame or criticizing self. It means according to the activity of my old brain, I would like to do like the polar bear. I prefer to sleep six months per year. But at five o'clock, I wake up because nafs labwame, the no cortex, criticizes me and tells me I am not an animal. I must wake up and start to meditate to make a connection between my heart and universal consciousness. The third level has nothing to do with the brain. old brain or new brain. It is situated in the level of the heart. It is nafs natare. It is conscious to itself. And when we are talking about the heart, it is the beating muscle in the left side of the chest. The fourth level of nafs or self is not depending at all to the material body. It is the beginning of the of other extraordinary experiences, out of body experience. And in this level, nafs is ruh. Ruh means a spirit. So when you are talking about happiness or wellness or etc. It depends to which level I am. I then identify myself in the level of an animal or a critical being or a peaceful being in the level of the heart or out of this three-dimensional world and body, this material world. So from this moment, Nafs or self is alive by itself. It has nothing to do with the life of the body, of the activity of the brain or the heartbeat. It uses its own capacities, which, is, which are endless. And there is a method to reach, so it means that according to the Gnostic, there are certain methods to free the birth of real self from the cage of the body. There are the methods. So they are, they, it is not to talk, it is to apply and to get this experience. And the goal, what is the goal? If self is independent from the body, why it is into the body? Why it is in company of the body during my whole life? It is because the body, the material body, is composed of the element of this material world. It is an instrument. When I am, when I know myself and the capacity of the self, Not only I am able to change the self, but I am able to change the world around myself. And this is the reason that soul, which is independent, totally independent from the body, which existed endlessly and which will exist endlessly, is in company of the body during my life to change this material world. and to create an outer world. As Professor, he explained, to create the poetries. The poetries can be created only by self, only. 
It is from another world. It has nothing to do with the matter. It has nothing to do with the brain. Beauty. Philokalia. To discover the beauty through the dust of the matter. This is for this 